Hey everyone, my name is Mars, like the planet, and this is Housewarming. Me and my partner have just purchased our very first home, so if you're interested in design, homemaking, and figuring it all out, make sure you subscribe. Today I'm going to be talking about how me and my partner purchased our very first home at only 26 years old. Now I have a ton of notes that I've written, so if I'm looking down, that's the reason why. But I do want to say a disclaimer, I am not an expert, I am not a realtor, I am not a mortgage lender, I don't know anything about the home market or anything like that. All I can speak to is my experience. I also want to say that I live in Louisiana, so the home prices are totally different from New York or California or Washington, so I understand that buying a home at 26 or even buying a home at all is out of a lot of people's price ranges and a lot of people's budgets. But if you are trying to buy a home or if that is a goal of yours, hopefully you can take something from my story and apply it to yours. I also wanna say that I did purchase this home from my mom, so I cannot speak to having a realtor or looking at homes or anything like that. So I would ask you know, other people questions about that if you do want to know more about the whole realtor touring homes side of things. My partner and I have been together for about five years as of 2021. And before we moved in together, we were actually long distance for four years. I was in school when we first met and then I graduated and then I immediately started working and I moved back home. She was working when we first met and then she decided to go to school once I graduated and she just graduated in May and then she started working, but she was living at home during that time. So my mom bought this house to be used as a rental property and she bought this home about five years ago or six years ago. And she had renters in it during the time that we were living at home. So I had seen the house once or twice when she first bought it. But other than that, I was not involved at all, at all in this house. She was just the person that owned it and she was a landlord of this house. Once me and my partner became serious and we knew when we wanted to buy a home and about what time, we really started to do our research. And this research started about two years ago. We knew that we wanted to be in this home together in October of 2021. That was the date that we set for ourselves. And we started plunging into doing all kinds of research. We were Googling, we were YouTubing, we were asking friends, asking family, asking anybody that we knew that had purchased a home, that was a mortgage lender, that knew anything about buying houses or selling houses. We were getting that information because knowledge is the best thing for you. I understand that homes are very expensive. So everyone talks about saving up for the down payment and saving up money. But knowing what you're getting yourself into and knowing what the process is, is the very first step. And you can never have more than enough knowledge and questions. No one is gonna look at you crazy for asking this because there are first time home buyers every single year that come, that come around and are asking these same questions over and over and over again. So after we researched, we came up with a plan and we started using, they have like free calculators online to decide how much you can afford, like how much house you can afford. So I knew that me, and both had to be working full-time jobs to afford this house. That's why we both own it. I cannot pay for these bills by myself and neither can she. So we started to come up with a plan on how we're gonna save this money because although, like I said, people always say the down payment, the down payment, that's not the only thing that you have to pay for. You have to pay for the down payment, you have to pay for an appraisal, you have to pay for an inspection, you have to pay your closing costs. Once you buy the home, you have to pay insurance, you have to pay utilities, you have to pay for furniture. There is a whole lot of things that get added up very, very quickly. So our plan was that I was gonna be working full time and I was gonna start saving up my money very heavily while my partner was in school. It was very important that she focused on her education and she got a degree so she could start working full time after she graduated. If you're trying to save for a home, there are many ways that you can save. Obviously we stayed at home and I know that is not feasible for a lot of people, but you can maybe cut back on your spending. You can also maybe increase your income by getting a second job or getting a side hustle of some sort to just put some money away at a time. You're not gonna just have $10,000 fall into your lap. You're not gonna win the lottery, but you also maybe could take out a loan or you could ask a family member for help or ask a family member to gift you your down payment. Also, if that is not possible for you, the best way that you can save is just reducing your living expenses as much as possible. Now, like I said, everyone is not able to do this. That's why getting into the door of home ownership, no pun intended, is so hard for a lot 
lot of people. The other factor is your credit score. Your credit score will factor into what type of interest rate you get and how much you're able to borrow from the bank. So make sure that you're paying your student loans on time, your credit cards on time, your car note on time, and make sure if you're buying a house with a partner that they are doing the same as well because the bank looks at both of y'all's credit scores. So as we're researching and we're talking and we're saving and things like that, we actually had a hiccup in our plans. So let's do a little bit of story time. So in January of 2021, this year, my mom had renters in this home. Now we had always still planned that we would buy the home from her in October and she would tell the renters to move out. So suddenly in March of 2021, the renter said that they were moving out because one of them had lost their job due to COVID and now the home was empty. Now it was kind of bad because my mom all of a sudden didn't have someone to pay the mortgage, but we were ready and on standby and ready to move in. So we actually moved in this home in May of 2021 and we actually leased the house from my mom and paid her rent before we bought the home in October. So that also just gave us a trial run to see the home, to be in the home, to just see how we liked it and also to see how me and my partner um, live together for the first time. Now I know that not everybody has a secure, now I know that everybody does not have that circumstance happen to them. So we're honestly very fortunate that we were able to give the house a test run before we moved in. So like I said in the beginning, we skipped the entire process of needing a realtor or looking around and finding homes because we already had the home here. But we also needed someone to facilitate the actual purchase of a home which is a mortgage lender. A mortgage lender is someone who helps you process your mortgage, which is a loan from the bank to buy your home. Now, when looking for a mortgage lender, you really need to just do your research. I got a recommendation from a friend. Now, your mortgage lender is really gonna be your saving grace through this entire process. They are going to help you and answer all questions that you may have. They're gonna walk you through every single step that you need until you are ready to close on your home. So typically, the step-by-step six-month process into buying a home is one, get pre-approved for a loan. Two, you need to start looking around, get a realtor and start finding homes that you like. Three, once you find a home, then you can make an offer on the home. Four, your home will then get inspected and then it will get appraised because they need to make sure that the home is actually worth what the house is being sold for. That protects you from buying a home that's being priced way more than it's worth. So if someone's selling you a home for $400,000 and the home is only worth $300,000, the bank is not gonna let the seller do that. Fifth, you are going to sign a bunch of paperwork and you're gonna basically submit your bank statements, you're gonna submit all of the documents that they're asking to show that you have good credit, that you are able to afford the house, that your partner or whoever you're buying the home with is able to afford the house, and then you will pay your closing costs, which includes your down payment and all of your fees for these people looking that stuff up, you have to pay them for that and any other taxes and property tax and stuff like that is all factored into your closing costs. Now, sometimes the seller can pay your closing costs for you, but we did not have that in this situation. And then lastly, you're gonna sign a whole stack of paperwork and then you'll be handed the keys and the house is finally yours. So the process when, you're, when you've actually put in an offer on a house goes by very, very quickly. A lot of the stuff is done behind the scenes. They're doing credit checks, they're doing background checks on you and your partner just to make sure that you can afford the home. And once you get approval, you can get that sigh of relief that, okay, we're here, we've done it. Most of the hurdles that you have to jump are in the very beginning which is saving for the house and actually finding the house that you want to buy. So now here are some questions that I asked and a bunch of people asked me. So first, is it better to rent or to buy a home? Now, this question gets asked all the time and I honestly think that the two are very, very different. It honestly depends on where you live and your finances. Obviously someone in New York is going to be renting more than someone who lives in Houston, Texas. The prices of a mortgage versus the prices of rent are drastically different and the prices of homes are drastically different. Also, owning a home and owning a piece of property is totally different from renting a space out that you can move out in a year, two years, you can, you know, call up a maintenance man or your landlord when things go wrong. When you own a home, it's only you, that, that's it. If, if the ceiling falls out, 
that's on you. I mean, you do have homeowner's insurance, but that, that's still on you. You can't just call someone to fix that for you for free because a lot of things that go wrong, you're gonna have to pay for out of pocket. Also, when you own a piece of property, you own the house and you own the land beneath it. When you are renting something, you clearly don't own anything and you have nothing to show for that in the long term. So it really depends on what you want out of this. Don't just think of, because they, you can actually rent a house. Don't just think of renting as living in an apartment. You can rent a house, you can rent a three bedroom, four bedroom house. But when it comes to owning a home, that is a totally different story. So you really need to look in your finances and what you truly want out of this because you can leave an apartment in a year but a home is a long, long-term commitment. If you are thinking of moving anywhere, if you're thinking of going to a different city, owning a home is not for you. Secondly, should I be married to the person that I'm buying a home with? Now, legally, no. You can buy a home with anybody. It can be your brother, sister, mama, partner, anybody. Me and my partner are not married and we do have plans to get married, but it was obviously but it was honestly more important for us to buy a home and to save up for a home than to save up for a wedding. I even think there's a show on Netflix called Marriage or Mortgage or Mortgage or Marriage when you honestly have to choose between the two because mortgage, a mortgage and a marriage are equally as expensive. Now, I know that speaking to social norms, it is quite, you know, the norm to be married before you move in with somebody. And a lot of people will say, if you're not married to them, do not buy a house with them. Now, that's a whole nother story. We can talk and if you want me to do a video about owning a home with someone who I'm not married to, I can definitely go into depth because we had a lot of planning behind the scenes and a lot of work behind the scenes on ourselves, on our finances, on the conversations that we were having all five years until we bought this house. This is not something that we just impulsively jumped into. We had to have very serious conversations about how do you spend money? How do I spend money? What happens if you lose your job? What happens if we break up? Because that is something that could happen. Now I'm not wishing bad on us, but it is something that could happen. We could break up. Then what happens with the house? That's an honest conversation that we need to have instead of clouding our judgment thinking, oh my God, we're in love. We're gonna be together forever. That's really not, a realistic way of thinking. And if you can't have those really hard conversations with your partner, then you are not ready to buy a home with them. The last question is, what is a good monthly payment? Now, like I said, everybody's finances are different. Everyone can afford different things and everyone lives every place. Like no one is gonna have the same situation that you do. No one's gonna have the same amount of debt that you do. No one's gonna have the same amount of income or live in the same area as you. So I, living in Louisiana with a two, come, two income household, we pay $900 a month for our mortgage and we bought our home for $140,000, which is very, very cheap. But the bank will approve you for what you can afford. Now I will say, do not max out your budget and think that, oh yeah, I'm gonna have this big, huge, four bedroom, huge house. Because yeah, you might be able to afford the monthly note, but monthly note is not the only thing that you need to pay for. Like I said, you still have insurance, you still have utilities. You also still need to pay your other bills, which are your student loans, your car note, your car insurance, your clothes, your gas, your groceries, all of those things add up and you still wanna have money saved over to do fun stuff like go out to eat and go on vacation and things like that. So you really don't wanna stretch your budget thin just trying to get into a big, huge house. You don't wanna get roped into paying more than you can afford because that is a lot of stress. <laughs> Buying a home is a very serious decision and a very expensive decision. So do all of the research that you can before buying a home, ask all of the questions and do not compare yourself to others. Listen to me, do not compare yourself to others. When you go on Instagram and you see these perfectly crafted, beautiful homes and these people saying, I bought my first house at 16 and their home is beautifully furnished. Do not look at those people and do not compare your story to those people because you don't know what is going on behind the camera. You don't know what is going on behind the scenes that got those people to that place. Just because someone has a perfectly designed home on Instagram or on Pinterest, does not mean that translates to their reality. So just take things one step at a time. I promise you will get there. I promise whatever you're wanting out of life, whether it's owning a home or renting or anything like that, or just taking your time, make sure you take things one step at a time. I promise you will get there. And I'm so happy for you if you just closed on a home, congratulations. But that does it for my video. I thank you so much for watching till the end of this video. If you have any more questions, I'll be so happy to answer those questions for you. You can leave them down below in the comments. Like I said, we just bought this home in October. As of recording this, 
it's November, so we've only owned this home for a month. So I will definitely do more check-ins to let you know how things are going and let you know how things are progressing as first-time homeowners. I post new videos every single Wednesday, so I will see you guys next week. Bye!